Hello friends, welcome back to the second video of PID controller training with MATLAB. So in this video, we will be looking at the ultimate gain and ultimate period method. I hope you have uh, seen my previous video where we have tuned the PID controller with the help of the process reaction curve. So if you have not seen that video, please go through that video first and then come back to this video because few concepts or the MATLAB coding we require from that video. Okay. So what is the ultimate gain and ultimate period method of the PID tuning? So this method is also given by the Sir uh, Ziegler Nicholas. Okay. So this was rather this is the first practical approach to tune a PID controller. Now what are the steps? So we have to follow few steps to get the approximate values of the uh, PID parameters. So first set the P only mode, then increase the gain till the response is oscillatory. Okay. So we have to first take the system and we have to apply that system with the P controller only. And you increase the value of that P that is a gain till the time you get the oscillatory response means what sustained oscillations. This we have already seen sustained oscillations you increase the value of gain till you get the sustained oscillations and you stop increasing that gain. Once you get this oscillatory behavior, oscillatory response, note the gain and name it as an ultimate gain. So this gain is known as the ultimate gain. And the period of oscillation is known as the ultimate period. So you get the KU and PU. And with the help of following table, we can easily find out the parameters of different controllers. So if you want to use only P controller, then KC equals to KU by 2. If for PI controller KC will be KU by 2.2 and TI will be PU by 1.2 and for PID we will be having KC is equals to KU by 1.7, TI equals to PU by 2 and TD equals to PU by 8. Okay. So let's follow these steps in the MATLAB and let's try to get the proper values of KP, KI and KD. Okay. So let's start here so let me give this same title so this is the simple program for pid tuning using ultimate gain and ultimate period method okay perfect now let's have the same what is that our complex variable s so let's have this okay now let's take one simple example you can take any random system so here this time i will be taking three poles so it is one divided by the first pole is at let's take at minus four into the second pole may be at uh, 2 we will take on the third pole we will take at third pole we will take at uh, 1 okay minus 1 so 3 poles 1 at minus 4 second minus 2 and third is at minus 1 you can take any number of poles at any uh, location but remember that your closed loop system should be stable okay then only you can apply or you can design the PID controller for that system. If your open loop system is unstable, then we cannot design the controller. So your open loop system should be controllable as well as the observable to design a controller. Okay. So, okay. Ye, this is what our system is. Now, what is our next step is? So next step says that we have to increase the gain till we get the oscillatory behavior. Okay. Now, how to get that? In your lower classes, we have already studied that the root locus method gives us the location of the poles or the gains at which our system of response will be oscillatory. Okay. So whenever my the uh, root locus, whenever the locus crosses the J omega axis or uh, what I can say is if the poles are lying on the J omega axis, then our response to the system becomes oscillatory. Okay. So with the help of the root locus, we can easily find out at what point or at what gain my system will oscillate. 
okay so how to get the root locus here so r locus of my so kiska r locus nikalna hai system ka okay so r locus of system so let's run this program and let's check yes perfect so this is what the root locus is now see this is our j omega axis and this is our total stable region and this rhs is the unstable region we have three poles one is at minus 1 minus 2 and minus 4 okay so these are the locus we have see this part till this j omega axis to the left my system is stable and after this to the right hand side of this j omega axis my system is unstable what happens if my poles are lying on this j omega axis okay so if i zoom it if i zoom it i will get the exact values of this j omega axis okay so let me click here so that it will give me the proper values of the gain as well as the frequency see here this is 89.9 this is the gain of my system at this point okay 89.9 so this becomes my ultimate gain okay and the frequency oscillating frequency is how much it is a 3.74 3.74 is my oscillating frequency so this is my ultimate gain and this is my ultimate period not sorry it is a ultimate frequency not a period okay so let me take first this ku it is 89.9 okay so okay let's have here find out ultimate gain and ultimate period from root locus okay so what we get ku ku is equals to it is 89.9 and what was our frequency so omega u okay let's name that is equals to omega u that is a oscillate oscillating frequency this was uh, like it is 3.74 radian per second okay so it is a 3.7 3.7 radian per second okay so how to get this oscillating frequency uh, period then so this is nothing but pu is equals to yes 2 pi by omega so it is 2 into 3.14 divided by omega u this is what we get the ultimate period so this becomes my ultimate gain al ultimate gain and this is my ultimate period okay perfect so once you get these values now our task is very simple just follow the table and you get the values of kp k k okay so the next ta task is calculate values of kp ki k d using table okay okay so let's have the table now okay so this is what we want to design a pid controller so pid kc becomes ku upon 1.7 so it is kp equals to we getting ku by KU divided by 1.7. Okay, what about KI? KI is equals to KP divided by TI. So this is nothing but TI is PU by 2. So it is PU divided by 2. Okay, and next we get the KD, which is nothing but KP into TD, and this time the TD is nothing but PU by 8. Okay, so it is PU. divided by 8 so these are the values of kp ki kd okay let's save this now our task is to get the pid controller so the pid okay the pid slash controller so let's name this pid controller so the syntax is pid pass the parameters kp ki kd okay now have the open loop complete open loop including your pid controller and the system so here this open sys equals to the series combination of what is the pid controller okay comma 
we have the original system so this becomes my open loop forward path key next is get the closed loop close pid oh sorry close system close system will be feedback of your forward path key comma we will take the unity feedback system okay now let's check out the step response of the system so step of closes okay so step of closes this is the complete block diagram with the pid control okay so before that let's check out this is what we get so figure 1 figure 1 i want this as a figure 1 so i also want figure second and i want to check this step response of our original system this is what response response without controller okay so this is our figure 1 this is figure 2 response without controller and the third one this figure is this is the response with controller okay response with control perfect now let's save this and let's run this so what we get perfect let's check out all those three figures so this is our root locus this time we don't require the root locus kyunki the kaam ho gaya uska root locus ka okay now let's check these two so i will keep these two side by side so it will be very easy for us to compare perfect now see here this is the we have uh, the step response of the system without any controller so if we see again this is a you can solve the same pid controller parameter using prc method see again we are getting a shape curve here we have the system lags okay what is the steady state value here we have near about uh, it is 0.125 okay so you can get like this also so characteristics so you will get peak response is what it is nothing but 1.0.125 and what is the overshoot we have any no overshoot so settling time how much settling time is so this is what the settling time is so 4.89 so these are the different characteristics you can get easily but our point is to what here see here this is the response without controller and this is the response with pid controller check the steady state or very huge steady state error we had here okay so let me remove everything here so for a step response my system behaves like this with the tuned pid controller okay now check out what is this steady state peak response is this is the overshoot so it is a 44.8% overshoot and what is this settling steady state value is what this steady state value is here final value is 1 here we had the final value is 0.125 okay so in this way we can easily define sorry we can easily design the pid controller okay now again i am telling you that the values which you are getting that is kp k k d are totally approximate values so just observing this response now you can vary your kp k k d values but by starting point to mil gaya so once you get this starting point you can easily Uh, vary those values and you can get so if you want to reduce this overshoot we and we increase the kd uh, derivative parameters okay so you know those basic things now but what we didn't know here is how to get those approximate starting values of kpk kd so i hope this makes you very very clear here okay perfect so let's check what values of kpk kd you get here okay so let's let's directly print those values so it is let's pid directly print the pid system okay so this is how you get the values of kp kd so this is what the parallel form of pid we have so kp is 52.9 62.3 and it is 11.2 okay so with this uh, i feel i hope that this video and the previous one clears your doubt how to tune the pid controller okay So with this we will stop here and thank you so much for watching this video. So if you like this video please hit the like button and comment section me likho how you find this video. Thank you thank you so much.